I, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, every now and again, I like to check in with, with our good friends on the Fox News Network, or, or as your grandparents call it, the real news. Uh, <laughs> and, and to be frank, uh, oftentimes this show is critical uh, of Fox, but only because they're terrible. <laughs> like, sometimes almost shockingly terrible. For instance, two weeks ago, Justice Department released a report on the Ferguson, Missouri, Police Department shooting of Michael Brown. Basically, exonerating Officer Darren Wilson and debunking the hands-up, don't-shoot narrative. And then they released a second DOJ report stating that the Ferguson Police Department routinely violates the Constitution and federal law with a pattern of racial bias, unreasonable force, intentional discrimination, and mistreatment of detainees, wrongs borne disproportionately by African Americans. <laughs> but on Fox, <laughs> you're gonna love this. <laughs> Despite their 24-hour schedule, they really only had time for the one report. The DOJ now admitting, hands up, don't shoot, never happened. People have been fed a narrative. Protesters who have been running around this country uh, telling a lie. The tsunami of misinformation and innuendo. Boneheaded, non-fact-based rhetoric. It never happened. Did it not happen. It didn't happen that way. Wilson's been exonerated. Let's move on. Let's move on! <laughs> the Department of Justice found that the flashpoint incident for protests did not happen the way some thought. Although in this second report, they did also document a tower of racially based kindling wood, years of unreasonable force, lighter fluid, and daily tossed lit cigarette butts of discrimination and harassment <laughs> that could easily lend itself to the flashpoint. But as the fire safety wardens of Fox suggest, that <laughs> ah, let's just move on. <laughs> but here's the thing. The anger is still there. The people couldn't move on at Fox. <laughs> they, they, they demanded restitution at Fox. Why isn't the media, which peddled that narrative, apologizing? Obama, Sharpton, they should be held responsible for their incendiary rhetoric. Fanning the flames, rushing to judgment. Blood on their hands. The damage was done, or the inflammatory rhetoric was used. We saw members of Congress saying, hands up, don't shoot. And if one of them has so far apologized for misleading America, we haven't heard it. I have not received a single, I am very sorry. <laughs> for igniting racial conflict, green and green. I haven't seen one! <laughs> the lesson Fox News is getting at is very clear. Wouldn't it be nice if people who jump to conclusions and peddled a false, divisive, anger-stoking narrative had to apologize for misleading America? <laughs> now, now, Here's where the shit gets real. <laughs> I wonder if there's an analogous event where we could test Fox's fealty to this principle of restitution for aggrievement. Does the word Benghazi ring a bell? A bunch of new questions about Benghazi. 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 Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. That, first of all, <laughs> Benghazi isn't Beetlejuice. You don't say it three times. <laughs> But if you insist, okay, let's use that example. It's a tragic event where Americans died, like Ferguson. But if the analogy is to hold, who will play the role of nation-dividing, anger-stoking rhetoricians before the official government investigation was completed? Special report investigates death and deceit in Benghazi. Susan Rice willingly went along and lied on the Sunday chat shows. The CIA warned that there might be an attack on the 9-11 anniversary. During the attack, they didn't send help that was waiting in Tripoli, or C-130, to assist these guys. Coming up, they could have saved four Americans, but instead our government told them to stand down. So basically you're saying the government of the United States told its military, if I want to put this in a catchy, protesty kind of phrase, stand down, don't shoot. <laughs> and Fox, didn't restrict its anger stoking to words because let's face it, their older viewers who are hard of hearing also have a right to be mad. So scary opens and that burning Benghazi footage in a semi-continuous loop like some kind of Fox News Yule log. Oh, they're running the burning compound footage again. 
It seems like Ben Gosmus comes earlier and earlier every year. <laughs> but of course, unlike Ferguson protesters, Fox wasn't being irresponsible and divisive. They just wanted the truth. We have unanswered questions about Benghazi. There are glaring questions that are unanswered. Questions still remain unanswered. There's questions about stand down orders and so on. And here we are all this time later, we don't have the answers. So we still don't have the answers. Four Americans are well, dead, uh, and there well, are a lot that, of unanswered that, questions. That, that, that. Well, your sentence construction says, I just want to know, but the tone says why the president had an ambassador whacked. <laughs> well, finally, on November 21st, 2014, they got their answers from an exhaustive report from the Republican-controlled House Intelligence Committee answering those many questions. Did Susan Rice go on TV and try to deceive anyone? Report says no. Did the administration ignore credible warnings about that day's attack? Report says no. Was there a stand-down order or failure to rescue those individuals? and send rescue planes. Report says no. Was there a massive intelligence agency cover-up? Report says no, not CIA, not FBI, none of them. Which means all these elements in the two-year Benghazi rage-gasm were, <laughs> what, do, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, Tsunami of misinformation. Right, 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 right. And when <laughs> non-fact-based yes. rhetoric. Yes, 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 that, that, right, it's all those things. So it would only follow that, just like Fox demanded of any protester who said, hands up, don't shoot, the correct action for no stand down, don't shoot for Fox News now would be to... Why isn't the media, which peddled that narrative, apologizing? Yes, yes, why not? Yes, ah. oh, Eric, I'm, that's so true, yes. And so, in the fateful days following that Republican House Intelligence Committee report, what did the Fox say? <laughs> in fact, other than a couple of half-hearted efforts to on the Republican-led report, its contents went largely unnoticed on Fox. Even Megyn Kelly, who was prior to that desperately searching for answers, had the House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Rogers on her show two weeks after he released the Benghazi report and never asked him about it once. Not once. Yes, the network, who used the word Benghazi like a clubhouse password. The official Republican-dominated House report on Benghazi was the only news story in two years that didn't remind them to talk about Benghazi. <laughs> Which brings us once again <laughs> to our main point of respect and appreciation. The beauty that is the ugliness of Fox News. <laughs> they demand accountability for anger and divisiveness whilst holding themselves entirely unaccountable for their anger and divisiveness. <laughs> for two years, they used Benghazi as shorthand as a symbol for the whole concept of a corrupt, lying, tyrannical, possibly murderous Obama White House. Kind of like other people used hands up, don't shoot as a symbol for systemic racism. And there's really only one difference between the two phenomena. Systemic racism actually exists. <laughs> <clears throat>